One result of measuring the gravity of Earth around different points is we recognized that the oceans stick to the continents a little bit. The, the water level at the shoreline is higher than the water level in the middle of the ocean. Seuss correctly surmised that this had something to do with how mountains form on the margins of continents, but he had the mechanism wrong. Willis was actually closer. He recognized that it's a process of the dense oceanic crust forcing its way underneath the lighter continental crust, but he thought it was more like ripples in a pond than the actual spreading of the seafloor that we recognize today. The actual process is that currents within Earth's mantle drive this conveyor belt-like motion of the seafloor, with new crust emerging at the centerline, at the mid-oceanic ridges, and this slow, constant subduction near the coasts, where heavy plates sink down as these high-density slab graveyards. And the gravity of those graveyards deep below the margins of the continents, pulls water away from the weaker gravity of the low-density plumes that they shove crustward. The strongest example of this is in the Indian Ocean, where the surface of the water is a hundred meters lower out in the middle than it is at the shorelines. Now, Seuss was under the impression that the effect was ten times as strong as that, which led him to two conclusions. One, that the difference that we were measuring between the depths of the oceans and the very heights of the mountains was actually much greater than we realized. Two, as a consequence of that, as the gravity of Earth oscillated, shards of crust got thrust upward or driven downward, or even just expansion and contraction of ice caps at the poles, areas might alternate between hundreds of meters below the ocean or hundreds above it. So that's the mechanism. It's, it's the sea level was swingier than we know that it could have been.